Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McNulty. This book was published in 2020 by Little Taller Books. The hardcover comes in at 224 pages. And this book is the 2020 winner of the Wainwright Prize for Nature Writing. This book was written by a teenager. Dara McNulty is currently 16 years old as of the time I'm filming this. He was only 13 years old at the start of the diary. We see him have his 14th birthday when we're not too far into the book and then he is almost 15 years old by the time the diary concludes. He's a very young author, we'll put it that way. But Dara isn't just a teenager, he is also a dedicated lover of nature, and he's gained a pretty substantial social media following over the past few years because of his interest in nature and because of his environmental activism. You could go so far as to call him a young naturalist, and as the title would suggest, this is his diary. He divides the diary into four different sections, one for every season. We start right at the very beginning of spring, just before his 14th birthday, and then we conclude at the end of winter the following year. So it's pretty much exactly a full year. And in that year's time, we really get to know Dara, and not just Dara, but also his family, since he, of course, still lives with his family in Northern Ireland. We learn that Dara has autism, as do his siblings, and as does his mother. But unsurprisingly, the main focus of the majority of the diary entries in this book is the natural world, because Dara has a passion for nature. He says in the book that he thinks he was born with it, which I don't disagree with. I think we're all born with a love for nature. It can just sometimes diminish over time. More on that later. But I do think his parents had a big role to play in making him who he is today. To me, it very much seemed that they share his enthusiasm for nature. I mean, the whole family, meaning Dara, his parents, and his two younger siblings go on numerous outings throughout the year that he's keeping this diary. They're able to interact with and observe nature, and then Dara can go back and write about it. His mother introduces him to a number of different experts from whom he could learn more about nature. She is always by his side during public speaking engagements. I think his parents had a big part to play in all of this, and I do think he knows that. But even though he shared a lot of the experiences that happened within this book with his family, they made the memories together, this book is very much a solo venture. This is all about what he was thinking and feeling in those moments, how he sees the world, what the natural world teaches him, and I cannot wait one more moment to say this. I've restrained myself up to this point. The writing is breathtaking. I kept having to pinch myself. A 14-year-old wrote this? A 14-year-old wrote this. It will never stop being incredible to me because his descriptions of nature are just beyond. He describes things so eloquently and so evocatively. You feel like you're standing next to him seeing everything that he's seeing. It reads like he has years of practice writing about nature, but apparently it just comes naturally to him. Pardon the pun. He says toward the end of the book that writing is actually what helps him process what he's seen, felt, and experienced out in nature. Like he'll come home from an outing and just pour everything onto the page. As he says, when people ask me why I experience nature so intensely, the truth is that I only know I've experienced it when I'm writing it all down later. The intensity gushes out and I feel everything again. I relive moments by scratching them out on paper or typing them up. I don't need to think about it much. All the details are right there in my mind and it surprises me every time. But while a lot of the material in this book is in fact focused on the joy that Dara feels when he's out in nature, it's not all sunshine. There are some negative emotions in here as well, as Dara could be expected to feel and record in a diary that encompasses an entire year. There are definitely some leftover feelings of fear and anger because of the bullying that he's experienced, because he's different, not just because he has autism, but also because he doesn't like normal teenager things as much as other teenagers. He has an unapologetic love for nature, and kids are not kind to anyone who's even slightly different. But beyond those specific feelings, there is a lot of just kind of general teen angst going on because Dare is a teenager, and that's just kind of what teenagers do. But sometimes, in various entries throughout the book, Dara is feeling down because he's feeling frustrated. And what he's feeling frustrated with is just how selfish people can be. He sits back and observes the world in a state of disbelief, 
at just how much we as people have allowed ourselves to mentally check out from nature, to willingly ignore the fact that we are inherently connected to the natural world, and that the earth is worth more than just what we can suck out of it. I think a young person like Dara is precisely the right choice of person to bring this kind of an issue to our attention, because he kind of has a foot in two different worlds, one of a child and one of an adult. He is still close enough to his childhood years to experience the wonder of what it's like to interact with nature, that the world hasn't hardened him to the point of completely forgetting that he's connected to nature. He's able to communicate that and remind us of what that feels like. But he also has one foot in the adult world. He is approaching adulthood, so he's able to see and understand the harsh realities of the world. To me, the whole book felt like an invitation back into the world of a child's back into those feelings of wonder that I'm pretty sure most of us have experienced in our younger years. Of course, when I read this book, I couldn't help but remember myself as a little girl, swimming in a local creek to catch crayfish, going out picking huckleberries with my family and my grandparents' backwoods, and making friends with the cows on a farm that I very briefly lived on. Why do all of those types of magical moments fade so easily into grown-up concerns? Are we really all that busy that we can't stop for a moment and look around and see how amazing the natural world is and what a real shame it would be if we destroyed it entirely? Dara's love for nature is infectious, and the quiet and beautiful observations that he makes throughout this book, I believe, have the ability to, even for a precious moment, bring us into that headspace. And I think it's going to be incredibly necessary for all of us to start with that headspace if we're going to make the kind of life-changing choices that will ultimately benefit the environment. But also his anger at the state of the world and at the mess his generation is being handed is a real wake-up call. How can we say that kids are our future? How can we want to set them up for success in every other way but then not make changes to our own lives, to at least try to make this earth at least habitable, if not healthy, by the time his generation is being figuratively handed the reins. The simultaneous love and outrage, which stems from that love that is present within this book, made it very reminiscent of Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, to me at least. And I very much hope that this book and all of the other work that's being done by young activists out there ends up having the same impact as Silent Spring did back in 62. I really enjoyed this book overall. I mean, like I said before, his descriptions of nature are absolutely beautiful, and that probably would have been enough to win me over just by itself. But there is so much more to this book than that. I thought it was so eye-opening hearing about his experience being autistic, how certain situations have the capacity to completely overwhelm him, and the fact that he was able to write down and communicate what it felt like in those moments of being overwhelmed, and also how he's just not always sure how to handle himself in certain social situations. He's able to write about that confusion. But also, I thought it was so fascinating hearing about his experience as a teen activist in the spotlight, how sometimes he feels like a complete imposter, while other times he feels used by certain media outlets who are just trying to generate a headline. He handles all of that so effortlessly in this book. I don't know what I was expecting from this book when I went in, given that it's written by a teenage author. I mean, I have my own vague memories of writing in a diary when I was a teenager. I know it was a lot of nonsense, and I know it was a lot of bad poetry. And I suspect if you were to read it today, which I pray no one ever does, it would read like an old itinerary. And this book was nothing like that. That statement kind of plays into one of my only pieces of constructive criticism about this book. It's the fact that I think he wrote this book with an audience already in mind. He hints in the introduction that certain people had asked him if he'd be interested in writing a book. So I think when he was going through and writing these diary entries, he knew that he was someday going to try to have them published. I don't necessarily think he was less honest in the entries because of that fact, 
But I don't know if diary is a right way to describe this book if it was always meant to be read. To me anyway, diary means I don't want anyone to read this book, especially not people of my own generation. The only other issue I had with this book was extremely minor, but it was the fact that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes he would name drop a certain plant or animal species but he wouldn't describe what they looked like. He was just kind of assuming that you already knew. But as a reader from North America, I'm not familiar with wildlife native to Northern Ireland. So it would have been really nice if he would paint that picture consistently. I would have very much liked to have been able to visualize the species that he's talking about to be able to see them with the author, but instead they just read like names. And then the onus was on me as the reader to go out and look them up if I wanted to be able to see them, which would have been the author's job to put that picture in my head. But again, if he did actually write this as a diary meant just for him, it would make sense why those things are absent. And also it's kind of predictable that he would occasionally not include a descriptor because he's lived in Northern Ireland his whole life and all of these things are extremely ubiquitous to him. But if those are the only two real issues I saw in a debut work of nonfiction that he wrote when he was so young that went on to win the Wainwright Prize, I can only imagine what kind of a career he's going to have ahead of him. I think it definitely deserved to win the Wainwright Prize, and I'm really looking forward to reading his next book, which according to his Twitter is due to come out in 2022. So those were my thoughts on Diary of a Young Naturalist. If you have read this book, if you've heard of it, or if you're now interested in reading it after seeing this review video, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you would prefer to reach out to me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.